Hello, hello, hello. It is me, Josh, again. Um, I'm sitting in what used to be a full playset with swings, and now it's a half playset, uh, which is really just an elevated two by six foot little area. Um, if it wasn't so rickety, I'd be much more comfortable. But I think sitting in this really rickety thing is uh, sapping on my confidence. But I picked here and you know, you reap what you sow. And I sowed this, I guess. Um, so episode 46, that's where you're at. Wow, 46 seconds too, that's interesting. Um, this episode was just Pat and I sitting down over Discord talking about um, us buying houses, which we both did in the past year. He's, uh, he's looking to sell his, so he's going through the process of fixing that up. I'm gonna keep mine for a good five years or so, so I'm fixing it up for other reasons. Um, but it, we just sat down, talked, caught up, and uh, yeah, there's not really much else to say other than it was a good conversation that I think you'll enjoy. And I am now going to get down from this before I fall because I don't trust this thing at all. So let me take the slide down. Is that, nah, that'll be fine. Okay, I'm gonna take the slide down and that's how we're gonna end the episode or the end the intro. So, ready? All right, cool. This is, this is kind of working. All right. Uh, Enjoy episode 46 of the Junk Tour Show! Whatever. Yeah, we'll just go about it. So, is, the, to say. is the fan picking up at all? I don't hear it. Yes. Dude, I love this this crisp uh, noise cancellation thing that Discord has. Because, mm -hmm. like, this fan right here is blowing right on it. Mm -hmm. And, like, nothing. I don't have an option for that. I don't have an option for crisp oh, it, stuff. It must be because you're going through the, uh, the browser. The browser, yeah. We'll get you a well, new laptop one day. Discord needs to not shoot the bed. Yeah. I did a full, I told you I did a full factory reset, right? And then they tried to install that first thing and it still didn't work. Yeah, you mentioned that. It sounds like they're just, they just don't give a fuck about your chipset on your laptop and you're like well not a lot of people have these so they can go suck a dick it's a macbook air bro what are you talking about <laughs> yeah but it's a macbook air from like 2015 16 yeah something like that the the chipset the chip sets change so they're like mm. at a certain point they expect x amount of people to not have them anymore so not also made of money they don't like you yeah well that's obvious have you seen your face carlos not even attracted to you I know. I it's something that hits me hard every day. I just wake up first thing. I'm like, my cousin doesn't think I'm hot. What kind of southerner am I? I like to imagine that you wake up and you check your phone to see if he texted you, and then you're like, <laughs> "Am I cute now? What about now? Still not. <laughs> no. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, it's hard being me sometimes. Yeah, that's why I'm so glad I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Pat. How's it going? Hi, Josh. It's it's going. It's hot here. I'm not not a big fan. Yeah. What's it What's it at right now? At right one now, at one o'clock, it is approximately eighty eight degrees, but the feels like is ninety. The humidity is at forty four percent. Oh, I do not like that. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. I'm sitting at seventy three. Oh. With thirty eight percent humidity. But that's only because it's going to rain tomorrow and Monday. I think it's supposed to rain like this weekend a little bit. But also, it's always humid here. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you could say it's going to rain. Oh, my God. Every day? Every day. I kind of forgot about that. I forgot how much it rains there. Yep. I am <clears throat> very excited to not be here anymore. Yeah. So, that that's a good bridge so today we're uh we're kinda i've done this before i don't know if you can tell yeah you have so <laughs> uh we're, we're just going to talk about um home ownership because in the the jds group you and i own homes carlos does too mm -hmm. but he's too busy working um he doesn't care about us Idiot. but both of us are new to home ownership so i think it's true i bought mine 
I started looking this time last year. So I bought yeah. mine in August or September. And I have been a homeowner for a year now. Yeah, so you just hit a year. So mm -hmm. figured we would just shoot the shit and talk about things we've learned. And as we were having a conversation, I don't know, a week or two ago, and, and a direct quote from you is like, so many things about home ownership make sense now or landlordship makes sense. Oh, now. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's so I guess one of the things that it's different than I thought it was going to be like like it is most things. I guess when you're a kid, <coughs> you're like, it's just going to be great. I'm an adult. I can do whatever I want all the time and there's no consequences. And it's like, well, just like everything else growing up. Immediately, you find out that it is not all that it's cracked up to be. Uh huh. No cadence. But um, I think one of the coolest things is that we, as homeowners, have our own fucking space. Yeah. Like I, I can literally do whatever I. I could knock this entire wall out. Here, keep talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close the door because she, she's whining. You're good. I could knock okay. this entire wall out, and just leave it open to the air if i wanted to make this sorry if I, I wanted to make door this too in, in case she gets petty and goes into my uh, room which she has done before because <laughs> she's no she's not allowed in there and if i close this door she's like okay well i'm gonna go sit on your bed and make it so you can't sleep because of allergies because of allergies that's her petty voice but anyway go on go on you can do whatever uh, you want yeah i could knock this whole wall out and destroy this entire thing and if i just wanted to make this a bug room i could but i don't i don't want to do that i could and there's no one that could be like don't do that yeah you kind of nice i just realized when you said that that i can do that hmm? like in my mind because this this room is like it's a decent size and then the master is a decent size i could just blow it out and have a giant fucking room and i could have bunk hmm? beds <laughs> so much room for activities yeah jess you get the bottom fuck you <laughs> I'm top bunk or nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it that's something that's really cool. Uh stuff that's not really cool is like when shit breaks, like my AC took a shit overnight uh two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Was calling the AC guy out and then spending three hundred and something dollars to get the AC fixed, but I was like, it's May, it's already ninety degrees. I'm not going to be without AC. Yeah. Have you gotten anything like um, like appliance insurance, like American Home Shield? I have not. Okay. For your next place, I, I would recommend that. Because my uh, okay. <clears throat> both my brother and my mom have had that for every house they bought. And mm. uh, I, I got it for this one. So what it does is there's like different packages, but the big one covers like basically any appliance. Any appliance and any like sink or toilet or ac like pretty much anything that's not part of the house Got and it. if anything goes wrong with it you submit a claim it's a hundred dollars for the technician to come out but they pick one for you <clears throat> so you don't have to go through the vetting process right. they pick one they send it out and either they fix it for a hundred dollars or if it isn't fixable then they'll just buy a new one oh so like if you have old stuff like i do like my water heater i think is rated for like 10 to 15 years and it's about 12 or 13 years old now like i right. expect that to break sometime in the next four years but i'm paying like 40 bucks a month and then by the time that it does break i'm just like hey uh insurance daddy fix it for me make it make it better make it better yeah uh i'll definitely look at that i'll have you text me that off so i can look into it okay but um yeah it's it's different, man. It, it really is, but it does make you understand why apartments are so shitty about stuff. Mm -hmm. When you're like uh, going to paint the walls or when you're going to do when literally anything in your apartment when they're like, yeah, you have to steam clean the rug and like all this shit. It, it all makes perfect sense now because as a homeowner, I'm like, I don't fucking want to have to repaint any of the walls. Yeah. Will, but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah because it's so much work and especially if you have someone renting doing it you don't know that they're gonna do a great job right right like most people are not professionals so it's not a, it's not a shot on them it's just it's the way that it is like my mom my mom loves painting rooms so she came and painted like 
one, two, three, four rooms of the house. No, five. So she painted five rooms of the house over the course of a week. And uh, they all look great. But then I came in and started painting the rest of it. And there's like very clear spots where it like got on the ceiling or I did the I did the JDS tag and like the first coat you could still see through it. So I didn't really <laughs> think that through, but it's better now. And there's like Jordan left this giant drip on the wall on accident. I don't know how it happened and no one caught it. But so there's this like it's probably half the size of this pencil width, but this long mm. just sitting on a wall. And I'm like, perfect. I need a painting to cover that. <laughs> because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fix it. <clears throat> no, no. <clears throat> One of the things that that was cool and we were excited about when we first got our place um, was there was structures in our backyard. So whoever was here last, I guess, built like a playhouse for a little girl. Mm -hmm. And there's a there was a bar on the left hand side of the backyard where they would like oh. have guests come out hang out. But like. <clears throat> It was very dilapidated and like not good anymore. Like the doll, the playhouse, the floor had been completely like beaten to shit and like was no longer able to be like stood on because oh, no. it it was old and like termites and just weather damage and shit. So how how old just, is the house? 1918 i want to say oh shit okay yeah we have old we have an old house like we have a concrete house our house is a oh, concrete shit. house yeah. yeah so this is not this house is not going anywhere no it's this solid. is set in in the ground but so we we took it apart and it was terrible i was excited i was like yes demo day i'm so excited we spent a full fucking day trying to take that dollhouse playhouse thing down we just called it a murder shed and it was awful because whoever built it built it like they were building a house like there was a foundation everything was rooted and like built into the ground so that it wouldn't go anywhere and like it was terrible to take apart it did, was terrible did you get it done in all one day we got that done in one day the bar i got most of the <clears throat> the interior bar stuff Mm -hmm. But it was on a raised, obviously it's raised up and there was a roof over it that was like just cheap metal slats that they essentially like drilled in straight. And I tried to get that done that day. When I say I tried, I didn't really try because I, I did it. I got the roof off, but it fell on the pillars that I had cut it from. And then I just let it sit there for like a year. Oh, this wasn't recently. This was like when you <clears throat> moved in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So yes, uh, last weekend, last weekend, I finally finished taking it apart and it did not take me super long. Uh, I am in much better shape now than I was, mm -hmm. but uh, it was, it was a process. It was very, very time consuming. And like, I just don't, I'm not, we are of the generation outside is for fun not uh, for manual labor yeah especially us like my my younger brother has his outside is everything like he plays maybe one or two video games he doesn't do a lot of indoor stuff but he's all about like fixing up cars and building shit and um i think he bought a uh, dirt bike recently so he does both but he's also a lineman for um bright house so it's like outside is his everything yeah he's like i just want to be outside yeah and he's got a super red right neck, down. which is hilarious because he's from South Carolina. Oh, no. And I'm like, mm, you're being a stereotype. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, I'm excited to embark on the process again. Uh, for those of you that don't know that are listening, I am selling my house uh, and moving to Philadelphia. And it's going to be much different. Uh I did a couple digital walkthroughs this week on Wednesday and we are losing so much square footage because we are attempting to live in the city. <clears throat> but you you get that experience that you wouldn't have any other you know, any other way. Yeah. So what do you I'm have, excited for it. What do you have in square footage right now? They said it's like fourteen hundred square feet, but it feels like it's more than that 
Yeah. Yeah, everything is just very like very well sized, I guess. Um they use the space very intelligently. There's not a lot of like how the fuck is this here? Mm-hmm. And plus we have that addition we have an addition on uh next to the ma- on the master bathroom that is essentially a storage area. Oh, okay. So we I I think we have closer to like grand total like 1700 square feet, mm-hmm. but um, I say it's like fourteen, fifteen, but we're looking at places that are like one, eleven. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is gonna be a little tight. It's gonna be a little tight. Was it was it pretty tight when you were still in the apartment? Because I believe that yes. was eleven hundred. Okay. Yeah. I guess it you have the little... two dogs also. Yes, yes, that definitely adds to it. But um, yeah, dude, eleven, eleven is fine. Uh, especially if it, it. So the issue with the apartment is it was this way. It was just very oddly shaped. Wait, show you, you froze. Can you show that again? Which way? So, the apartment, uh, the apartment was eleven hundred this way. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna get eleven hundred this way. Oh, that's nice. That separation yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's probably three stories or two stories in a basement, depending mm-hmm. on how you. Still three fucking stories because it's one, two, three. Yeah. yeah. But. <clears throat> um. Yeah, the apartment was just a weird layout. It was. It was definitely not meant for two complete people. No. Like, two complete separate people, rather. Mm -hmm. Like, luckily, we were bachelors, and we were trying to build this company or this group because we just turned the living room into the recording space. And then, like... Best decision we ever made. Yeah, that was was fantastic. (laughs) I do think it's funny that we took... Because we had three separate spaces that we could put stuff, and we put it in every single space. Like we started in the dining room, then we started in the space near mine, then we went to, to the the big living room. So, yeah, to the living room. We were like, why are we just why why? Let's just put it in the big spot, and we did, and it was great. I loved it. I know. I kind of want to do that now. <clears throat> I just want to do my living yeah. room. Just like all I do in there is like I, I took my old PC after I built this one, put it down mm. there. I'm like I just I'm just farming chia and playing Brunescape. Why can this not be <laughs> <laughs> like a complete nerd room? But yeah, that's I'm I'm excited to the thing in in Philly that my wife is so lovingly going to do is she's going to give me the basement because oh, nice. one it is cooler down there mm-hmm. uh and two it's I'm going to get the length of the basement to be able to do with it what I want. So essentially I will get my own man cave recording area and um very excited about that. Very excited cuz I'll finally have like some seclusion. Yeah, it's hard when you have people like walking through and just like coming by the door even. Yeah, like during the during the work day and I can say this because she'll never in a million years listen to this. <laughs> she'll come into my office and it's like I'm working. I'm trying to focus. I, I I like and as soon as you come in that breaks my focus on what I'm doing and I have to get right back into it. Yep. Dude, when when I was so before even in this place, but in the apartment before, when Jordan either wasn't working or was working from home, he would, well, really when he wasn't working, he would play World of Warcraft, which, cool, that's fine. But then yeah. he would jump in Discord to talk to the guild people. And I'm like, dude, I'm trying to, like, do science, you know? I'm like, I'm, I'm doing <laughs> computer science here. I need to actually think I'm solving problems. And I, and I would just like, what do you, do you, you not, please? I just want to focus. So I bought noise canceling headphones and that mostly helps, but it's dude, smart. Having your own space is going to be amazing, especially because it's yeah. be so big. I have, I have the office. The office is great. I love it. And, and Justin's now migrated to having his stuff in his room and it's, it's, it's great. It's fine. It, it gets the job done. I'm very happy to have my own space, but being able to like spread out, just like, put everything where it needs to be and and I want it to be mm-hmm. is I'm very excited for. So, yeah, there's something different about having what is effectively an entire floor because you can make it feel like almost like um not clarity. I'm blanking on the we recorded the podcast there. You're working with them. Oh, mainline. Mainline. Main yeah. Like mainline just you have that entrance way. It has like this feeling of professionalism, you know? Like you walk yeah. in, there's a lounge area, there's a conference area, and with you having the whole floor, even if it's miniaturized, you're still going to have this like, I don't know, this interior design chance to just make things 
Trading yeah, you. I'm really excited. I'm excited to be able to. So Shannon actually bought the same table that we have um, for podcasting. One? She got, I think it's a black one because they didn't have the blue one. Oh, okay. but as soon as she gets a desk for her work from home stuff, because she wants to get a desk desk. She's not like us where it's like, this fucking works. I don't care. Yeah. Um, she gets that. She's going to give me that one. I'll be able to have the two tables set up again, and I'm very excited to just kind of have that in a place where I can set things up on it, slide it off of the wall, and be like, "Okay, four people recording session. It's happening now." Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was that was the big benefit of like being in the living room and always being set up. Was like, anytime we were like, "Oh, Egg's gonna come over." cool we're just gonna fuck it let's just record and then we sit down start recording immediately yeah it was great for uh game nights too it was just like we could we could host a lot of things like i know you were normally working but all those contan nights oh yeah like those were oh, awesome yeah. we need so always working do you know yeah do you know when like have you listed the house yet so we haven't listed it yet um we had some the, the stuff in the backyard we wanted to get resolved and we wanted to make sure that our our spare bedroom was in a showable place mm -hmm. uh because they have to come in and take photos and stuff but eric who is uh a friend of mine but also was our realtor that got us in here uh has a potentially interested client they're gonna come do a walkthrough on monday Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So he was like, I think I have someone that might be interested. We do Monday at two. And we were like, yeah, that's fine. Got a lot of shit to do still, but, uh, to get it like ready. Yeah. But we're, we're excited. And then, um, yeah, we're just trying to find a place in Philly. Like that's, that's the next hurdle is being able to close on that place in the same period of time as closing on this place so that we're not homeless yeah and i don't have to live with either my parents or my in-laws yeah which i'm sure you love them but it's not once you're an adult it's like going back to feeling like a kid but not in oh, yeah. the fun way in like the i can't do what i want <laughs> way right and the i want to go and hang out with friends reconnect and come home at 4 a.m on a saturday and they're like and woke up the dogs and it's like <laughs> i'm 30 years old <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> i'm older than the dogs they can deal yes they can they'll they'll be fine <laughs> so what's the process of of buying a house virtually like compared to in person because i i i remember going through it and i feel like so much could, would be lost doing that it's tough um the thing that i I've kind of drawn a line in the sand on is that because it's Philly, uh, my family is only an hour, hour and a half out of Philadelphia. Uh, before we sign anything, my parents are going to walk through the house. Oh, uh, they actually, yeah, they actually did Wednesday. They went to two. We, we had two virtuals and they met my realtor there who I only had heard of from word of mouth. Mm hmm. So I, <clears throat> it was a twofold process for me. I wanted them to kind of figure out if he was the right guy to work with. Yeah. Uh, because like if you're a shitty person, you're a bad realtor. Um, and I feel like vibes are very important with the realtor because mm -hmm. if they're just trying to make a buck, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy this one. Buy this one. Uh, one of our places was a 4-2, completely remodeled, like down to the studs. They built it back up. It, it's The price continues to drop. So I have them go look at that. Is in a horrible neighborhood in North Philly mm. uh, where it's literally like beautiful house and down home. Beautiful house. Brought up windows. Beautiful oh, house. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and was to the point my mom didn't want to get out of the car she was like i'm not comfortable oh that's so awesome. they they did they ended up going through and like they facetimed me and did all the stuff but the, the realtor looked at my parents and were that he was like i will not put your son your daughter-in-law in a home like this 
He goes, I will not. He's mm-hmm. like, it's it, if you could pick this home up and put it somewhere else, it'd be beautiful and amazing. Yeah. He goes, but the reason is the price that it is for what it is because of where it is. And you could not give me this home. My parents were like, he's fine. We like him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's so hard. It's, I, I ma- Actually, you know what? I was going to say it's so hard to find, but it sounds like both of us have super lucked out with our realtors. Because one, yeah. one was already your friend. The, the guy that I found, Eric, also Eric, is just a super good dude. Like, I want to hang out with him outside of... <laughs> Can we just be friends, Eric? <laughs> yeah. Well, we got coffee the other day because he, he had, like... He, normally, after a year, he'll do, like, this, uh, how's your house doing? But he's like, the market's so insane. I'm going to do it now. But we did yeah. like I, I expected it to be like a twenty minute meeting, like, hey coffee, here's your stuff. All right, deuces. But we ended up hanging out for like an hour and a half just talking about life and he's got two kids, a little bit older than Riley, so there was some like mentorship going on there too. But, oh nice. Yeah. But um Well, it's it's interesting. I can tell you from the from the virtual perspective, because all the pictures lie, right? Like you're you're when you yeah. get photos taken of your house you're like my god that room looks so big like in your head you know that's not that's not true your eyes see it and you're like but it's got to be true but it's not it's right there it's right (laughs) proof (laughs) it's not angles proof and um yeah so that's that's honestly the the thing that we're struggling with again because we are losing so much square footage Mm -hmm. um we're trying to find a place that's going to work for two people that are currently work from home and and on starting a family at some point in the near future so it's we're, we're juggling a lot of things but we're also trying to be in a neighborhood where we're not going to get stabbed and like yeah <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot so are you looking for like a three two then yeah three two is is she's okay with a three one i would like a three least one and a half because i don't like sharing a bathroom just it's it's one of those things with a that child you mean <laughs> yeah with a child okay I hate, yeah yeah i, I hate I... children uh well no i didn't know no. if you were going to try to rent it out again no i think when we when we move it's going to just be us mm-hmm. but um it's, I, it's it's a negative thing from when i was a kid when i grew up my family all five of us we're in the same house and we only had one bathroom between us. Yeah. So I just have like a very negative connotation in my head of one bathroom, even though there's nine times out of 10, it's just going to be her and I, and the kid will not be old enough to use the bathroom for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. So like it, I, we don't need a one, like an extra half bath, but I'm like, no, I want it. So uh, also for like resale value, it's much oh, easier yeah. to sell a three, two than a three, one. Yeah, for sure. It's been an interesting process. It's been very interesting. Virtual. Uh, my realtor is now going to do, he's going to take us on essentially scheduled during the week where he'll FaceTime, walk me through, kind of talk to me about the property and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if we like it, I'm going to have my parents go up, have them do a walkthrough, have my dad look at everything and uh, we'll make a decision from there. Gotcha. So you're trying to have them happen at the same time not like sell this place go rent somewhere month to month up there yeah um just because again one of the things i learned in doing this process is that renting is stupid <laughs> if you can afford to buy a place buy a place and right now you i don't know what anyone's financial situation is who's listening to this but you can afford to buy a place buy a place but it is tough to buy a place right now yeah, you have to you have to make some compromises, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to set your expectations and know that you're probably going to come in under them, or financially you're going to go over. And if you are okay with that, then more power to you. But man, like stuff is selling right now at a a crazy clip here. Mm-hmm. Same with Colorado. I imagine Phillies. I'm at, I don't know, because Philly, being in a city, that's what a lot of people are moving out of. Correct. So the thing is, in the city, most of the draw, and this is one of the things that my realtor told me, Jonathan, yeah, he was like, the big draw in the city is that you can walk 
to bars and restaurants and this place and that place. And he goes, we've been in a pandemic for almost you know, a year and a half. People don't care about that right now. And they just want to move somewhere nice. Mm-hmm. Like, so in the city right now is a great time to buy because people are just trying to get out. Like, but if the first, that's not going to last forever. He's like, everything is opening up. So prices are going to start going up. He's like, you want to get locked in where you can. Yeah. He's like, but right now is a really good time to buy. And like having a place in the city in a neighborhood that's kind of coming up or already on the way up is just too good of a possibility to be able to like invest. Yeah, and now's the perfect time. Like your just the way that your life is is set up because you know you have your wife, you both work from home, you both make decent money. So now's the perfect time to get into a space that will appreciate, and uh, is just in a. And we can make now. improvements over time, and like. Yeah. What what yeah. improvements have you made in your current house? Honestly, here not many because no. about seven months in, we were like, we're leaving, and yeah we were like, we're not going to sink money into this if we're just going to turn around and sell it. Uh, we've painted every room. Every room in the house has a new coat, has a, a new coat of paint on it. Um, and we installed a garbage disposal. We've done some uh, like light, to, like demo work. And, and ultim- like in the grand scheme of things, we have not done what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of, Things we wanted to do but we we're not going to be here so we were like eh. yeah it's like you can live Why without whatever that thing is for an extra three months right and save the money that you were going to to dump into it anyway yeah yeah i i, I get that there's a i i've been doing little bits at a time because I, I expect to have this house for you know a, a many many a year but yeah uh, <clears throat> it's crazy how much the small things that you can do just make it feel a lot better. Like my, my uh, master bathroom didn't have any hardware in it. Like there was no towel racks. There was no um, towel racks. That's really the main one. The What's the, right. what's the thing that you put on rope? There was no rope hanging. That kind of stuff. So for like 50 bucks, I bought a set that had like the, the hand towel holder and, and two towel mm. racks, whole new room. Like the, my, <laughs> my towels aren't hanging over the, uh, shower the shower rod. rod yeah yeah and i'm like okay i get why people like this i get that dopamine boost of like oh i did a thing <laughs> i'm a manly man i used a drill <laughs> on a wall yeah we wanted to we, and and it's funny that we like i looked at my wife uh shannon last week after i finished tearing down the bar area and i was like kind of makes you want to stay doesn't it and she was like the outlook because we have a very big yard we we love our backyard it's got a lot of good trees in there um it's very big the dogs love it mm-hmm. and we we'd even killed like say like three feet out in like a rectangle because we had anticipated putting like a gravel area to be able to do a fire pit and some some outdoor stuff and then yeah. grass for the dogs we were like, yeah, like this is do some hanging lights. Like it would have been amazing. And as soon as we had killed that patch of grass, like we're ready to start that process. She was like, I want to be in Philadelphia. And I was <laughs> like, cool, 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 cool. That works. So there, there was a lot we wanted to do. And there's going to be a lot that we want to do in the Philly house. Um, what I would say to prospective homeowners and new homeowners is, just do it yourself. If it's if it's not something where you can kill yourself, just do it yourself. Because it's honestly like paying someone to destroy that stuff in my backyard would have been more expensive than an afternoon and a half or like a day and a half of my life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to push back on that. But if you're talking about like destroying stuff, yeah. yeah. There's there, like it doesn't take a lot of effort to break something, you know. No, Even if you just no. take a fucking sledgehammer to it, then you can get some aggression out. Oh, it was it was very therapeutic. There's uh, there's some things in here that I wouldn't like installing a garbage disposal. I was like, I'm gonna bring in someone to do that. I don't want to do that. Like yeah. that's a live wire, and I could kill myself. So and I like living. Li- yeah, and I like being alive to enjoy the house that I just purchased. <laughs> um, there's some things that I would push back on, but if you could like little stuff around the house, like do it yourself man yeah the sense of accomplishment you get is is awesome 
It's nice. It is really nice. Like, uh, and it's it's so funny talking about this because like, when I haven't done a podcast, just the two of us in in a very long time, and just yeah. I, the to see the the progression, in in what we talk about, has to be insane because, oh, yeah. yeah, we were, I think we were both single. We did our first one, our our last one together. I was like, we had just moved in together. I think that was the the last one we had done, just the two of us. Yeah, I think so. Unless you would count all those video game ones, which were... Oh, God, I loved those, though. Those they were so, were so fun. Whenever, So when you're settled in Philly and you want to come visit, I will make sure it's set up so we can do those again. Because they were just they were so fun to do. And I got so I fucking already... mad at Lion King. And uh, Mario, you got mad at Mario. I got mad at Mario too, but Lion King, I didn't know I could jump. Lion King, you were you were very upset. I was really mad. I was so mad Um, at that. Already told Shannon once we get settled and stuff next year, I want to come visit you, Mm -hmm. um, because I want to come see the Avalanche play. They are my second favorite hockey team. Right now, they're my first favorite hockey team because my favorite hockey team got eliminated. But I love. I love the Avalanche. I love the way that they play hockey, but it's very close to where you live. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to come hang out. So that is already something that her and I have discussed. And she's like, yeah, go have have a good time. (laughs) I was like, sweet. Dope. Yeah. And I got plenty of space and I I would love to go to another Avalanche game because I went to the one, but I was like, I don't, I don't know hockey nearly as much. But I know going I, with you, you'd be like, so this is what's happening, and this is why you should care. And uh, if this happens, this is going to be set up, because I also learned MMA from you, and that's how that went. It's like, okay, this is going to happen. Oh, my goodness. That's true. I, I And it's it's funny, like, looking back at stuff like that. Like, you're so – you know the things that, like, I'm thinking now. Like, I'll we'll be watching fights and texting in the, in the group chat, and you'll say something before I can text it. And I'm like, well, got to delete that text. <laughs> And just backspace, backspace. But it's it's really crazy to see the progression of you in that in that medium because you were like MMA's fine, I guess. And then we like started watching fights consistently, and you were like, "This is awesome." <laughs> yeah, my my MMA knowledge is directly correlated to the length of my beard. So the longer that my beard gets, the more knowledge I obtain. You more, you you accrue more knowledge as the beard gets longer. Yeah, it is funny though that now I'm I'm kind of feeling that role that you filled for me in getting people into it because um, Jess watched it a long time ago when she was a kid, not a kid, but mm. like younger. Yeah. And um, now whenever we're, she's around for a weekend and we're watching it, I'm like, oh, okay, so this is probably what's going to happen. And like, oh, that's not good because of this, you know? And I like, I've done that for Chris and now I'm moving into formula one also, which fucking fun. I don't know if you like formula one at all or if I'm not, it. I'm not a big Formula One guy. I started doing sim racing, and I'm like, oh, I, well, I guess I should get a wheel then. So I dropped money on that. <laughs> like, oh, well, this isn't a realistic chair. I guess I need to get a chair. It's like, oh, well, the chair is low to the ground, so I need, now I need a monitor arm so it can come closer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Justifications. Yep. Love it. But it's like, it's either that or I'm going to throw the money in crypto. And right now crypto is doing shit, so. Yeah, so fuck it. Like, and that I'm a... You and I are very different in that regard, and even my wife and I. I am very much like, if you have it, spend it if it's going to make you happy. Mm-hmm. If you're going to, like, I on a whim, I went out and, and bought Cyberpunk and was like, yeah, like, this is this is going to give me joy. And it has. It's given me joy. It's, it's you know, made a couple stressful days less stressful at the end of the day because I've killed many, many wraiths. Mm-hmm. Um and it's been great. It's been it's been exactly what I wanted it to be. So, whereas you're like, I'm gonna hold this for a rainy day, and I'm like, fuck the rainy day. <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, I'm I'm a big I'm a big believer in like if it's gonna make you happy, do it, and you can do it. Like, for spend. Yeah, if you're not like burning yourself, fucking go for it. That's one thing that I've I've gotten a lot better at as I've gotten into a more stable position in life. Is like, okay, I I. The reason I make money is to spend it. Just holding on Correct. to it for when something's going to go terribly wrong doesn't doesn't help anyone, you know. Right. And if you insulate yourself for things like that, like if you if you create that if you get that insurance for your appliances and your water heater breaks, you're like, Okay, I've this I've been waiting for this moment because I've been paying this thing. Like 
this is fine. Yeah. So it, it, it's, a, it's a little bit about forethought. Um, but, man, like, I, I, again, just thinking about the progression of us from that point in time to where we are currently is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, because it, yeah, it's only been like four years, maybe mm-hmm. five, and we're... Quarantine counts as like seven years, but also like negative eight years. Yeah, it's oh, quarantine was so weird, especially the beginning when, you know, no one knew what was happening. Yeah, we were like, yeah, we'll be locked up for like a month, maybe. Yeah. Then a year later, we were like, nope. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I remember just before lockdown happened, Doom came out. I'm like, well, I should probably buy Doom because that'll last me the two, three weeks of quarantine. (laughs) <laughs> like I remember because all the gyms were closed I bought a kettlebell from Spartan I'm like okay this is my workout equipment and I remember pulling out a yoga mat it. in the living room putting on doom music because I'm like oh this is fun and like throwing shit around so young so naive it's, it's crazy man uh, it's it's nuts and then to think that like it was really funny that and, and for those of you that don't know I got married literally right before lockdown like 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 three days before lockdown like hard lockdown but the cdc from the friday everyone got there or saturday that everyone got there rehearsal dinner we were allowed to be in groups of 50 or saturday was the wedding i'm sorry so the friday everyone got there everyone was allowed to be in groups of 50 saturday was my wedding everything was good the next morning they were like groups of, I think it was like 10 or 20, mm-hmm. like only groups of 10 or 20. It was the CDC. And my wife and I flew out on Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember. I it, think it was, it was Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday because I flew out Monday. Right. OK, so we flew out Tuesday and we went to the airport and it was the most like walking dead shit I have ever seen in my entire life. It was nuts. There was no one there. And like we didn't have masks yet because we weren't super duper prepped so we went out and got masks and like we were wearing gloves and we were like what is i don't even know what this is and we got like i got a phone call from my supervisor at the time at work uh that friday before we left for the rehearsal dinner and she was like when you come home from your wedding congratulations by the way uh she was like you're gonna work from home immediately (laughs) she's like you will not come back to the office and i was like Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Dude, I, I only left the day before, and it was the opposite of a ghost town. Everyone was scrambling to get where they needed to go before quarantine hit. Because I think, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, you said Saturday was the wedding. That was the 14th. Mm. 15th yep. was Sunday. We all hung out. 16th, mm. I left. Lockdown was on the 17th. So I was 16th uh... morning. I didn't think I was going to make it home. But there was so there was some issue with my ticket, so I had to sit in the line to like talk to the the person to get it sorted. Mm. And there was a dude who, who like behind me who was freaking out. He's like, "I don't know if I'm going to make it home. Uh, I my my daughter is going to be born really soon, and like quarantine is coming and everything." So I'm like, "Fucking go ahead," but like just to see the panic of that of like I don't know if I'm going to get home. This dude doesn't know if he's going to get home to see the birth of his first child. And his wife, he he just was like venting everything to me. He's like, my wife doesn't have anyone there right now. She got, she didn't even want me to go on this trip, but now I'm coming back. Why are you here? <laughs> yeah, I, I, th- I think it was a business trip, so I think he had to for that. But yeah. like, oh, that was a scary start to everything. Yeah, man. And like, it was just, and, and still are like people that were like made up. Like, no. <laughs> uh, have you seen Plandemic? It's pretty compelling. <laughs> I actually have not watched some it. Some valid point. I haven't either, but I, I would absolutely do that for a drunk drawer. I was just going to say, like, I wish we had thought of that. Drunk drawer commentary. Yes. I wish we had thought of that for March 17th as like the anniversary. <sighs> Let's see. What's Next another? Year. There's got to be another Next anniversary year. coming up. Yeah, we'll do the we two could year do, anniversary. We can, yeah, we can do this, do the two year anniversary. And we'll, we'll just drunk drawer it gonna be called plandemic because we're planning it every year we're planning <laughs> <laughs> i love it um yeah man it's crazy it's it's super nuts to see where we came from and like where we're going now also do you see do you see this yes are those from 
uh, they're all the drunk drawer bottles. Yeah. Yes, I'm so glad you kept those. Yeah, they're on the top of my on my my stuff. But yeah, I'm excited. I think I want to do another drunk drawer before we leave. I'm gonna see if Mainline will let us uh, go in and like utilize some of their tech to just be drunk and silly. Yeah. Do Do you have an idea? So if you, how quick is closing in Florida? Because if you list the house, I imagine it's gonna sell pretty quickly. It's thirty to between thirty and forty five days, depending on how quickly you want to close. Okay. Okay. Because yeah, I'll definitely come back. To do a, a drunk drawer there because those would yeah, be fun. So fun it'll be the start of a new trilogy too oh yeah because we did the first three when we were all in that apartment and mm-hmm. then now homeowners. we're out and, and away yeah i um the craig is also a dad now so yeah. it would be his first drunk drawer as a dad and sam who would be the other one i'd like to get because mm-hmm. i think it would be fun uh is having a baby in october oh, with really? his wife that's awesome yeah so it's like it's another it's another step you no know? yeah so all the kids can come and they can drink yeah. apple juice or grape juice yeah it'll be fine and they'll be Whatever. their children are basically drunk adults anyway <laughs> it's holy true. shit that will be the next trilogy we get a bunch of kids sat at a table <laughs> but they have to be four and under and they just scream and that's all they do <sighs> You said I don't have something. Do you have it? No. <laughs> but I'm mad that you said it. What? Did that Correct. happen in real life that I experienced? No, maybe. <laughs> Is that based on true events? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, dude, we, we were at, um, is it Disney? Where did we go? Disney or Universal? doesn't really matter. So we went there and uh, we were with Tyler and his kids and we had Riley. And Tyler's daughter... Riley wanted this like cookie monster thing. It was like a, I don't, I don't even remember. It was like a spray, you know, those spray things with fans on them. Mm. She wanted one of those. And we're like, no, you don't need that. We have this one right here. It's like, "Mm, okay. And then Bexley was like, oh, you don't have one of those. And then Riley started fucking crying for like 30 minutes. Like, but you don't have one. She wasn't even (laughs) being mean about it. She just said, oh no, you don't have one. None of us have one. She stated a fact. (laughs) Kids are drunk adults. Yeah, I agree with that. Which can be fun, but sometimes, sometimes it depends on the level of drunk. Yeah. Drunk adults are also not fun at a certain point. No. I can I can confirm, can confirm. Yeah, you have... got enough adults drunk in my time to, in hosting multiple events over the span of seven years, that like can confirm at a certain point, drunk adults aren't fun either. You've dealt with enough drunk adults for like four lifetimes, easy yeah that's i and that's the thing man like i so for shannon's birthday which is coming up next month we are going to stay on property for disney because mm-hmm. nice. i'm st- stupid and want to spend money i guess <laughs> as we're getting ready to leave yeah um but we're so we're staying on property and for her birthday like we're just gonna chill at the resort and like not do anything because she is also not someone who like loves going out and I have done everything I can hope to do to not go out as like often as possible because I just did it I did it every day for seven years and I was just like I'm done yeah you were Slurms McKenzie you burned out on it it's what everyone knew you for right exactly and that's I still get people that like I'll see around like I saw somebody in Publix one day and they're like oh my god Pat how's Tasty Trivia and I was like I guess it's fine I was like I don't do that anymore <laughs> or like you're way different when you're not I was like yes I am <laughs> it's almost like I was acting <laughs> it's, al- it's almost like that was a complete personality to get you sucked in and continue to come back and spend money at the place where I was and it worked sucker <laughs> idiot <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's dude being at Pelocity now for almost two years. Yeah, almost two years. Um is so weird. So weird to think that like I haven't had that job, but that's what I even know myself for in my brain. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we get a good blend of that stability and then getting to do wild and crazy stuff with this not that we've done much yet because most of it's been during the pandemic but like that 
that crazy stuff can happen. We just get to choose it now. You don't have to do it every night. You're not going to have like, yeah, a it's terrible day chaos. and then be like, oh, well, I guess I got to go pretend I'm happy for six hours. So much. It happens so frequently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and the mainline stuff has been really cool. For for those that listen to the podcast, um, obviously I haven't been on here in a long time. But... Yeah. Um, I've been recruited by Mainline Marketing in Florida to host uh, a podcast for them called Sound Connections, and that has been really fun. It's been really fun. It's been really interesting. I've gotten to meet a lot of very interesting people. Um, so this week, I was very excited. I, had, I wanted to post it in the chat, but got like sidetracked because my day essentially starts at 8.30 when I wake up on podcast record days, and... I just go until I get home. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to post, but one of the people I spoke to, she's done events, is did events with Prince and like oh, a wow. lot of other very famous musicians. She's been, she's used Andrew McMahon, who was the lead singer of uh, something corporate, Andrew McMahon in the wilderness Jack's and Mannequin. Jack's mannequin. So that was cool talking to her about that we talked about prince we talked about katie tunstall tunstall tunst she sang a song about a black horse in a cherry tree Ooh, i don't know if i played it you would know it okay but she's like talked about all these things and we talked we talked about prince for like a long time because it's fucking prince dude. yeah it's, why wouldn't you yeah so um and she's from like Min uh, michigan and she's from like the minneapolis area so she was like or I'm sorry, Minnesota. She went to school in Michigan. Gotcha. That one. Um, but yeah, like I've met a lot of really cool people. Uh, the week before I had done a, uh, a lady, Kristen Wilson, who started her own all female DJ company. Oh, cool. Yeah. And they're called RDJ rocks. Nice. And she like talked about music and like what music means to her and how they got through the pandemic. And, so like it's been really cool it's been really really cool there's just very long days because i don't get home until like after midnight yeah what wait was the the dj rocks thing was that the group that the woman that you interviewed the um sound girls was that the no, group she was talking about one. <clears throat> but she was talking about one that was uh, like a a rock camp for kids yeah i i wait that wasn't that wasn't that but she they know each other the okay. sound girls and and uh, Kristen know each other awesome. but it's been really yeah that the first night that you were there um, those are gonna get ready to release I think at the end of June oh, but nice. um, yeah the first night you were there and get home until after two yeah that sounds right because I got home around midnight when I wasn't expecting that and then you <sighs> you live an extra 30 minutes north of where Jess mm -hmm. does so. so it was it was a lot that night and we've adjusted the scheduling since then we only do two a night mm -hmm. whereas we tried to squeeze five i think into like three hours yes because it was me sound girls the one after sound girls no i was after sound girls wasn't there someone before them too there was yeah so we did uh we did one before that was supposed to lead into a one-on-one -on -one with someone who was in the one before that it was supposed to lead into Sound Girls. It was that was supposed to lead into you, and then you were supposed to lead into Scott and Mary. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did that one go? Because they they seemed like really cool people. They're very fun. Uh, Scott. Scott is Scott. <laughs> he's he, like a toned down Guy Fieri. That's the vibe I yeah, get from him. He's, he's like that's his. I in my head that's his like radio personality. Where I think if Scott came at it as Scott, as a guy who loves musicals and like Princess Diaries and like is just a cool down to earth, like managed more restaurants and bars in the Orlando area and has stories for days about it. Like if he went at it that way, I think it would be way more fun than he's like trying to be crazy and wild. And I just don't think that fits him. And Mary is secretly one of the funniest people I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, it's very low-key. Like, she's really yeah. funny, but it's like, 
you very have to pay quick. Attention for it. Yeah, they're real quick. Mm-hmm. She's very very quick, and it was really fun getting to talk to her prior to that about her daughter who is just hitting her teenage years and is like oh, this cool band you don't even know and it's called my chemical romance and like <laughs> it's not a phase mom <laughs> this is how i feel you'll never understand me you never went through this it's so funny it's so funny being on this side now yeah that's going to be an interesting thing too so like up until now with the internet when old music can live forever there really was new music. So it's like, you don't mm. understand my music because you don't have it. But now they're discovering right. things that like we listen to. Correct. And like, it's it's classic. Yeah. Dude, I can't wait. It's until old your music. I can't wait until you have a kid and they start listening to teenagers. And they get PTSD just, so bad. <laughs> just going to hear Mike in the other room just <laughs> peeing into a, into a waste bucket. <laughs> I'm still impressed that he made it into a waste bucket and not onto the floor. Onto the floor, yeah. yeah. I mean, eventually it would have got on the floor, I think, by it, distance. Yeah, I, I don't know. I wasn't in the room with him. I just remember him going That's into fair. the wrong room, but picking the right corner that also happened to have a trash can in it. <laughs> so, good job. That man Mike. is an innovator. <laughs> that man is an innovator. Man, there's there's so many stories that, like, Especially with like our group that I could go on and like the Meridian group for a long time. Like my formulative years of, I guess my early 20s was kind of a shit show because I was just going out every night. I didn't have to pay for alcohol and I was the center of attention. So whatever I wanted to do was happening. Mm -hmm. Then I would go to Meridian and because most times it was across the street. I'd worked in Oviedo at that graffiti junction that was there and it would just continue. And then I'd get to smoke hookah until like, like three in the morning. And then sometimes we were in there till like five and it was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had gotten to experience a little more of those, but the, my early twenties were just kind of a shit show, but for a non fun reason, you know? Yeah. It's, it's really weird that we kind of deviated so far in, in that, that like range. And then mid twenties, we kind of came together and now obviously we're old and we're kind of coming on that side Mm -hmm. still, still together. Yeah. Um, still keeping in consistent contact and all that stuff. So it's, it's very interesting. And, and like this friend group for me has been very interesting because I just met Mike on a whim at Meridian and that has then become you and Justin and like this whole you guys were all in my wedding yeah yeah it's like without without that initial meeting with Mike none of this happens so kind of impressive yeah it's so yeah the little moments are very I don't know I don't know I don't have words for it better than what you said so copy paste (laughs) (laughs) It's interesting to say the least. It's interesting to to see where we've come from and where we are now as homeowners. Yeah. I also find it interesting how different you and I are as people, but how well and how similar we are in. How do I word it? It's like the core of who we are, I think, is similar, but the outer shell that everyone sees is very different. Yeah. If we were put together, we could take over the world. Yes. If we did, if we like fusion dance. Fusion day together and which, like became one. Which I know how to do. So if you want to learn it, that would be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completely down for that. Okay, cool. I, I knew uh, learning it when I was 12 would pay off eventually. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely think that if we if we fusion if we fuse together, you and I would be able to take over the world. Which is what we're doing by building junk drawer. <laughs> correct. Correct. This is our fusion it's, dance. Yeah, uh, and honestly, like. Not ex- the to to bring it kind of back to the the homeowner thing. Like moving to Philly is scary because I'm moving further away from from that group, the, those those individuals that were in my wedding. Moving closer to one, which is very exciting. My best man, it lives in North Jersey, so I will see him more, which is great. Yeah. But um, moving further away from 
Justin and Mike and I guess you technically is a little further away. Um, but it's it's a plane ride for you, so it's this doesn't fucking matter. It's, yeah, it's basically the same. So um, that's scary, but I like that. Then junk drawer also moves. You know, like it's not just Colorado and Florida. It's then Colorado, Florida, Pennsylvania, and then who knows where it goes from there. So it's it's yeah. very interesting and very exciting to see what what's coming. Yeah, and it's going to make the times that we can all come back together so much more powerful for us. Like the the thing you sent me, I don't I don't know where that was, but that like five hundred dollars. No, it was like three thousand dollars a night for like a whole chateau. Oh yeah, I don't remember where that. I think it was like Wisconsin or something, some like <laughs> random spot. But that dude, I'm so excited for when we can do that because just being able to like disconnect for like a week but make stuff hang out and ah it's gonna be great and now we have so many options too because if i find something sweet close to me we can all stay at my place and then go same with you same with uh orlando and then if anyone else moves out we have that i don't know we're all all growing it's it's weird it's weird and a couple like listening to i listened to our our uh gaming stuff the other day just because like i was like it was early in work the phone like the phones weren't super jamming yet Mm -hmm. you know i like to listen to stuff while i work because it's just background noise i like need background noise yeah um i was listening to our super mario playthrough and i was like oh my god these guys are dumb the dumbest boys yep and we're gonna honestly i look i look back at my my favorite stuff my favorite stuff i look back on is um Breath of the Wild. Those were just some of my favorite nights. Because I would come home exhausted, just wiped, hosted two shows, set up four others, like ran around, picked everything up, like just dead tired. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, I'm pack a hookah and watch me play Breath of the Wild. And I was like, that is literally the only thing I want to do. <laughs> yeah. We but- would smoke a hookah and like. Yeah, you could just kind of zone out, and the game is so chill and pretty that you're just like, oh, I'm inside, but I feel like I'm outside. I can breathe, and like conversation just starts flowing because you have something to focus on, but it it's not so pulling that you forget how to talk. Right. You know. You know, we should. Oh, those we, are. We should do. Best. We can definitely do that now. Like my computer's strong enough that I could broadcast a game. Like it wouldn't be the exact same, but you could watch it from where you're at. And then just like I can broadcast it through Discord and then stream uh, to Twitch. Down. I think it'd be awesome. Just pick a. Couple I don't games. have Nintendo stuff, so yeah. I don't. I want to get a Switch eventually, but um, yeah, those are legitimately those are some of the, my favorite nights when we lived together. That was just like just lit, just hung out, talked about things, random stuff, and like you played Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Man, I miss those two. To be young. To be young. Old now. Yep. Well, let's uh let's end on that. On that happy nostalgic future looking note. I'm uh, down. Cool. Well, thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for listening if you're listening. Um like, comment, subscribe. You can find us on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok now, all at the junk drawer show except for YouTube, which we're working on getting a custom name. Um, we stream 28 every, more subs, 28 more subs. We stream every Tuesday night at eight 30 Eastern six 30 mountain um, D and D our campaign is about, we're hitting a pretty big uh, climax right now. Um, episode 60 is going to be a huge one. So please check that out. I, I will have this up before episode 60 goes. Um, so check it out and uh we have a discord as well um i don't know if you go to um link no the junk drawer show.com yeah that'll take you to our link tree that has a link for everything including our discord so join give us any suggestions ask any questions we'd uh we'd love to hear from you but otherwise have a great day have a great night and we love you bye bye